Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is going to be another raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, we've got a big times 10 coming in for Christmas season. Um, and I mean, hopefully you guys enjoy it and, and get what you want out of this times 10. I'm going to run through those champions in a second. Before I do that, I just want to talk you through a couple of things. Um, on my site today, we've got two, two days left of the advent calendar before we get into merry christmas um today is the biggest gems giveaway that we've got uh that we've had all month and this one's actually sponsored by plarium so three lots of a thousand gems and a thousand energy will be won today anyone can enter you just got to come in and drop your details on this form um the one tomorrow is going to be an account giveaway. Obviously, only relevant for people that actually want a kind of Kickstarter into the game. But I'm going to show you this account quickly. If you're not interested in this, I'll block this on the video so you can kind of just skip to the times 10 part. But this is what we've got. Big Dog is actually his third account. And he was like, you know what? I need to give one of these up. So we're going to transfer all details from, from this fella. He's a big part of my community, actually, uh, in terms of in terms of streaming and in terms of the discord so basically said any chance for like a christmas bonus we can give this account away and get it off my hands so i mean it's a level 71 account it's got a great haul that is not uh, to be sniffed at he's been he's done all of the progression rewards all of the daily login stuff so he's going to be going straight onto that new daily login reward in january uh, in terms of accounts we've got a candrophon Miscreated Monster, Sepulchre, Double Royal Guard. You've got your logins like your seal. Uh, we've got a Lissandra waiting to go. We've got a Scylar. Uh, we've got Virgum Car. We've got Blood Gorged. So some really good champions here. I wouldn't say this is like a straightforward walk in the park. You can now do everything in the game type of account. It's actually, it's actually a really fun account to pick up if you're relatively new to the game and you just want to jump in with some good champs. Because... Um, some of the giveaways I find are so whale-like that it actually probably takes the fun out of coming into the game. Uh, this one, you've got a good group of epics. You've got um, a few cool legendaries and you're still going to have to work your socks off to, to try your luck in the game. Um, plenty of gear to play around with. So, you know, it's a well-developed account, but not a crazy account. It's got a ton of silver, so you can play around with the, the items that you get. It's got a ton of energy to kind of work your way through stuff. Um, he's been working on, you know, picking up the stuff for the forge so you can, you can um, build gear. He's been doing some faction wars. It's kind of like mid-stage faction wars, really. Level 20 up to level 40. And I don't even know if he's had a pop at the Doom Tower at all yet. He's been doing a bit... Oh, he has. He's been doing a bit at the Doom Tower, so... Yeah, looks like on normal, it's kind of, you know, about a third of the way up the Doom Tower. Clan boss, um, he's hitting Nightmare. So, as I say, it's a well-developed account, but it's not a, a kind of broken, I've just won the game account, which I think is actually a better place to be. So, if you guys are interested in winning this account, it will be on the website tomorrow. That's going to be the box 24. And then what we're going to do is, after Christmas, I'm going to draw live on stream. Uh, it's actually going to be on the 27th. I'm going to draw live on stream the, the winners from the 23rd and the 24th. And I'm going to draw the winner for the monthly account takeover. So there's a lot of stuff we're going to do on that stream. Um, and just talking about streaming, I will stream tonight, 8 p.m. UK time, 3 p.m. EST. Uh, I'm then going to take a few days off and then I'll be back on from the 27th. So um, just in case people are interested. Right, let's get into this 10 times. So the 10 times, um, pretty much it's Christmas themed. That's where they've gone with it, as you'd, as you'd expect. Uh, let's get into the champs. So it's actually going to be two-pronged. They're going to be doing um, a set of champions from Friday through to Sunday. So what are we on now? Wednesday, two days time, around this time. Friday through to Sunday, the first set of champs. And really looking at these, they're like the old school christmas theme champs um and then you've got from sunday to tuesday all new champions all new ones um they actually put out on facebook quite a cool little thing let me see if i can find it very quickly show you guys if you don't see this type of thing start it
fresh. They put out this kind of like old school versus the new school. Sonic leading the way. By the way, his sword just appears there. So that gives you a little flavour of the type of things they're doing. So the, the Friday uh, the Friday through to the Sunday then. We have got first up a high elf and it is Mr. Jingles. Mr. Jingles. Um, <laughs> this guy is actually, well, since his buff, he's actually pretty good. He's pretty good. He's got a speed aura in the arena, which is strong. It's strong. It's not legendary, but it's, it's up there as one of the better ones in the game. Um, this would be the main purpose that you would pick him in your team. So if you're lacking a good speed aura, he brings that high value one, and then he brings some good utility as well. So he's got an AoE decreased turn meter by 20% if he crits. You have to crit. Uh, and fills this champion's turn meter by 10. So... It's a bit like a Scylla. He's going to drop back their turn meter and let some of your other team go. This is the ability I like, though, best. If you book him up, 100% chance to place a freeze debuff on all enemies for one turn if he kills someone. So you pick the squishy unit. You kill them dead. He has to be high damage built to make this happen. But then he'll freeze everyone else. And it just gives the rest of your team a ton of time to get their job done. And he's also got a decreased speed here. You know what? He's actually awesome. He's actually awesome. If, if you're struggling to get through Spider uh, 19, then he can decrease the speed of the main spider. He can kill one spiderling and freeze the rest. Um, and he can drop turn meter back on all spiderlings. Like, this guy is actually better than people give him credit for, um, but he's not top tier. He's a, he's a mid tier epic, but he's got a couple of places in the game where if you're struggling to get through some content, he can actually help you. Um, he probably needs to be, though, a level 60 to get this A2 off. It's quite hard to build him with enough damage and tanky enough to survive stuff unless he is level 60. So second one up, I am not a big fan of. He was, at one point, the champion. He was, like, the arena god. Nowadays, he's just pretty trash. He doesn't hit very hard. He's quite tanky. He's got good base stats on defense and, and HP. He used to hit hard as well. He puts heals out. He can revive a champion, which is actually, I mean, I used to use him in my Skinwalker uh, faction war team way back. And you know what? If someone died, he could revive someone. But the only way he revives someone is if he kills them and he doesn't hit that hard. So it's quite hard to make this work unless someone is super low health. Um, but he's just an all out, Kind of defensive unit, support champion, a bit of healing. He's okay. He's okay, but nothing more than that. Um, right, next one up is another one that I'm not that that keen on, actually. Um, 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 where is she? Okay, Frostbringer. Frostbringer. And I've said this a few times. Like, in terms of base stats, her base stats are actually good. 110 speed is huge. Massive HP. Good defense. So... In terms of keeping her alive, no problem at all. She's got heal reduction A1, which is kind of good for finite. It's also not bad for Agref, albeit because she hits at random, Agref, you can start to proc some of the mini spiderlings stuff that you don't want to happen. So you don't want to hit those mini spiderlings. So this hits at random is a bit annoying. Um, and it's only a 15% chance to place it. So it's so like that needs to be like 75, in my opinion. Um, and just, just hits two times. If they change that, she's got a bit more viability. Um, we've got a three hitter on her A2, puts a decreased defense out if they've got heal reduction on. So if that heal reduction did place better on the A1, then this becomes a good skill for bosses. Again, change the three times at random, just make it hits three times, then she's probably viable. Uh, and then she's got an increased speed and increased attack on her A3, four turn cooldown. Again, I tell you what, Give her plus fills turn meter by 15% and she's a champion. So I would, there's three things I would change about her. And if, if they did those three things, she would actually be totally in the meta. But right now, mm, not really. She doesn't hit very hard. She's got really low base attack. And I think she's pretty weak. So I wouldn't pull shards for her. Uh, next one, though, if you don't have, is huge. A huge epic. 
um, easily. Like if you think about Banner Lords, I mean, they just added actually a couple of like half decent rares, but Banner Lords is a pretty tough faction, pretty tough. And Stag Knight is one of the best Banner Lords, even compared to Legendaries. Certainly for faction wars, he's up there as like he's probably a top five Banner Lord in the game. He's got AOE decrease defense, AOE decrease attack. It's got 95% chance to land if you book it out. You can use a Sniper to bring it in as 100%. So that's a really important mastery on him. Um, high speed, high defense, high HP. Decreased speed on his A1 as well. He's great for getting yourself through waves. He's great for things like Spider Boss. He's great for... He's actually pretty good for Fire Knights. Um, because of his decreased speed and double hit A1. Um, pretty good for Ice, or very good for Ice Golem. Um, great for Faction Wars. He can do a job in the arena. His AI makes it so that he always does his decreased defense if it's available. So very, very solid champion. Definitely worth pulling shards for if you don't have one and you're thinking of pulling shards at Christmas. Um, and then we've got one legendary champion. You probably guessed it by that initial um, clip. So Nick, so Nick, he's awesome. He's the hardest hitting HP based champion in the game uh, and he does absolutely slam. He's one of the champions that helped me through to complete Doom Tower first, first time round because he's slamming so hard and he's, he's creating shields for you. Awesome in Spider, awesome in Faction Wars, awesome kind of really in any dungeon content, great in the arena, huge base stats. Um, got an unkillable as well so can be built into an unkillable team for clan boss like freeze on an a1 that doesn't need accuracy so you don't need to build his accuracy up at all just all round brilliant champion so in terms of voids he is awesome he's awesome and there's not a void epic in the mix so it's literally a case of you're either pulling for him or for or not i wish they put a void epic in the in the mix because you know, the chance of getting a legendary champion is still going to be low. So, you know, you, you kind of wish there was a, a decent epic to be going after as well. So that is Friday through to Sunday. And then we've got Sunday through to Tuesday. So I'd imagine it's going to be like Sunday. Uh, normally it comes on at 10 a.m. my time, which is probably like 5 a.m. EST. Um, <clears throat> we're going to be getting new champions. So first one up is Aox the Rememberer. Um, so he has got this Poison A1. I think this guy's good, actually. I've not played around with him yet. A few people have asked me. I've just been way busy with, like, tons of champions myself, guys, so I will get to it. But double hitter here, each hit chance of placing Poison, and you can build that to 30%, much like what Steel Skull does. Good Poisoner on his A1 for a Clan Boss champ. Um, heals on his A2 for 10% of their HP. Uh, heals each ally by an extra 2.5% for each debuff on the target. So, again, just stinks of clan boss you know if you've got 10 debuffs out there that's another 25 percent heal you've got another 10 percent down here so the heal becomes actually pretty damn strong i imagine this is plus 10 percent so actually makes this 11 percent not 20 yeah but still like a you know 35 36 percent heal is huge um a third of their health coming back every three turns We've got a decrease attack debuff can be booked down to three turn, which means he can be your decrease attack champion. Yeah, because both of these would be three turn. You can cycle it so that he always places decrease attack. Uh, if you do it on a turn for turn basis, always places decrease attack at the start of phase one with the clan boss, which means he'll always be your decrease attack champion. He places it as well, places decrease attack and then has got a chance to place um decrease crit rate both of those are actually very cool as well obviously you won't decrease turn meter on the clan boss but the decrease attack anyway is awesome um and as i say he can be your decrease attack champion plus an off poisoner which i think i think that's the first time we've had someone that can do that i'm you're probably going to flame me below and tell me i'm wrong but i can't think of someone else who is decrease attack and can keep it up for the whole time whole duration of the, the fight and becomes a poisoner for you so i don't know plus a healer like all three things are so awesome for clan boss and he's got this passive as well increases the duration of two random debuffs on the attacker when 
attacked. A bit like what Bulwark does. So, occurs once per hit. It's not even a chance to it. It happens. As long as you've got the accuracy, it happens. So, this guy is a unit. An absolute unit for clan boss, guys. Like, absolutely top draw for clan boss. Really, really like his kit. Um, it's the first time I think we've had someone come out for clan boss as an epic that you know, really brings tons of different utility from what we've seen before. So uh, he's like molding a few different types of champions into one. I really like him. Um, right, next one up. I did a guide on literally yesterday, and she is a freaking awesome healer. Wrecked to draft. Awesome healer. Literally got me through um, level 21 faction wars on someone else's account, showing her off. She is a unit, honestly. She is reviving. She's got heals and perfect veil going on uh, and continuous heals as well. She's got a decrease attack, A1, and then she's got this passive, which improves like resistance and heals. It's, she is awesome. She's like a mini, almost like a mini Duchess or uh, in terms of her veils and stuff and almost like a mini Scylla the Drakes in terms of her passive healing. I really like her. Brilliant, brilliant epic. Um, it feels like for epics, you're better off waiting for this group of champs, in my opinion. Right, next one up, I've got, and I'm going to do a guide on really soon, Aknag the Wender in. I've leveled him up. I've got his masteries done. I just need to do my guide. So he has got a A1, which has got a 30% chance of increasing the duration of a random buff if the target is under HP burn. Um, so basically, you're trying to strip a buff off if they've got HP burn on. It goes up to 50%. There's a lot of books here. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about the book in it. But also 30% chance, which goes up to 50 of decreasing a turn meter. On an A1, that's pretty good. So if they're frozen, it's turn meter. If they're HP burned, it's remove a random buff. You kind of have a bit of a bit of say around how that works. I'll show you in a minute. Uh, places block debuffs on all allies for one turn and a strengthen for two turns on a four turn cooldown on an A2. Strengthens the best debuff in the game. Block debuffs is probably... Strengthens the best buff in the game. Block debuffs might be the be the second best. So to have them both for one ability is actually pretty awesome. If it was block debuffs for two turns, this is a top tier move for one turn. I guess he's an epic, so he can't be too broken about it. But um, yeah, one turn it falls off so easily unless you speed tune really well. We then got an A3 can book down to three turns, which is really short for this type of ability. AOE. Books up to 90% chance of freezing everyone who's got a high attack or burning everyone who's got high defense. The shame with this is that even if you do decrease um, decrease attack on spiderlings, they're always just going to get frozen. That's the shame because actually you kind of want him to be an HP burn champ for spider and maybe a freeze champ for the arena or you know something like that. So that's a bit of a shame. Um, I'm not sure of the interaction on someone like Soraf yet or Agref. I've not tried it, but I will do once I get to play around with him. And then we've got a passive here. Heals all allies by 5% of their HP. Every time an enemy under a burn, debuff gets a turn. That's actually pretty huge. If you can imagine, if he could burn Spiderlings, that would be top tier passive. Um, also, fills, this, is, this is also cool, actually. Fills the turn meter of all allies by 10%. Every time someone under a freeze gets a turn, that's actually pretty busted against Spider anyway. If you're going to freeze them, everyone's going to get basically a full turn meter worth of speed based on this. It's actually busted good. This is really strong. Um, and then got an all battles defense aura, good base stats. Akak, Akak, Akak. I'm just going to call him Wendering. Um, absolutely top draw. Top draw again. Uh, these epics are great. And then we've got Grunch. Grunch, Grunch, Grunch. Um, the Black Swan. The Ugly Duckling. The Runt of the Litter. I mean, he's got good base stats. That's one thing we'd say. He's got Block Buffs A1. It's okay. He's got Bombs A2. Bombs just don't really have that much of a place in the game. They do detonate after one turn. It's an AoE. But one bomb's probably not enough to kill anyone. So... For the arena, I mean. So, what's the point of it, really? Um, he's got remove all debuffs from all allies, then places a heal. That's quite nice. That's quite nice on a four-turn cooldown. And then a passive, 
fills 10 meters of allies whenever a bomb goes off. I guess, you know, you bomb the whole enemy team. He's got to move fast. He goes second for you after your speed champ. He bombs the whole enemy team. The bombs go off and it makes the rest of your team speed up and hopefully steal the initiative. So I guess maybe he's cool. He's definitely the one that I like the least out of these champs. And then again, we've got one Void Champion for the um, for the event. There's no epics, but it is this fella. And I am going to be doing a guide on this champ pretty soon. Someone again is lend lending me an account with him on. I love the backdrop here, guys. Look how awesome this backdrop is. Um, the shiny blade in the moonlight with the lightning and stuff kind of glistening off it. He looks awesome. He looks freaking awesome. You've got the greaves here just flowing with like, I don't know, like the snow around him. He looks cool. Super cool. Um, so what's he got then? Attacks one time, one enemy two times. Each hit has got a chance to freeze. 20% chance. Books up to 30. It's a really nice A1. So each hit, 20% chance. 30% if booked to freeze is cool. Uh, ignores shield buffs. If there are one or more enemies under freeze, we'll also ignore block damage if there's two under freeze, and we'll ignore 30% of the target's defense if three or more are under freeze. So it's pretty obvious. Pair him with a freeze champion, and he's going to go ham. Um, he's got an A2, attacks one enemy, books up to 100% chance to put decreased speed out there for three turns. Three turns is long, um, and 100% chance of placing a freeze. Also steals 100% of that target's turn meter and places increased speed on himself. So if you're in arena here, you go in, you've got 100% chance to freeze the speed lead of the opponent, 100% chance of putting decreased speed on them, and you take their turn meter, and they're going to be the, the person with the most turn meter. So pretty much you, you get another turn, straight out, another turn. Um, so you might lead with your A2, wipe out their initiator, and then you've got another turn. And then you come in with something like an A3, attacks one enemy three times, um, books down to four turn cooldown. If the target's under freeze, removes the debuff after attacking and places it on all enemies except the initial target. So I guess the other option is you still turn me to here, freeze someone, and they don't die. Then you attack them, and if you um if they're under freeze, you freeze everyone else, basically. So you almost guarantee another turn again. So you've, it's almost like you're getting three turns before the enemy gets any turns with this guy, which is bloody awesome. It's really awesome. The freeze debuff will be placed on all enemies, even if the initial target dies. Absolutely awesome. We'll need accuracy to make this stuff happen. Um, we'll also attack all enemies except the initial target after the third hit. Wow. Didn't even read that part. We'll also attack all enemies except the initial target after the first hit. So there'll be a, an AOE hit. I'm wondering if that crits. If that crits, this will be bonkers. Um, so, love it. He's got a passive as well then. Decrease the damage this champion receives by 10% and increases the damage he inflicts by 10% if there are one or more enemies under freeze. Increases his champion's speed by 15% and resistance by 50 if there's two under freeze. Um, active effect. Places unkillable on himself for two turns whenever there are three enemies under freeze. This is the only bit that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Like, if you've got three enemies under freeze, chances are no one's coming at you. It's going on for two turns. Maybe you'll get one turn benefit of this. Maybe. But chances are, by the time the enemy get their turn, it's worn off. I think. I think. So this is the only bit which I'm not sure about. Um, like I wish it was more, um, once, once an enemy breaks their freeze debuff or, or when two enemies break their freeze debuff, you automatically get an unkillable one for two turns. I think that would be better. But anyway, um, really, really sweet ass void champion. I am going to be pulling all my voids between Sunday and Tuesday to try and get this guy. I think he looks absolutely freaking awesome and uh great job of the aesthetics and all that type of stuff so there you have it guys obviously times 10 it's up to you you roll in the dice but 
cool champions in the mix, especially the second group, in my opinion. Um, hope you have yourself a really good Christmas time. Uh, if you're not going to see any of my videos between now and then, I will be putting some up over Christmas, but I'm not going to be live, as I said earlier. Don't forget to get back to the website and, um, and get in the mix on all of that stuff. Whew, bit of a long one. I've been Hell Hades. I'll catch you later.